Hey everyone, it's Matt here, welcome to my channel. In this video I want to show you this set of watercolors from 1930s. I first saw this set browsing through TikTok. This person has found these, hidden from all the way back before the Second World War in Kraków, Poland. They have sorted through all these colors and assembled little sets and are selling them for us to enjoy this piece of the past. When I was ordering these, they were in limited quantity, they still are in pre-order stages and such, I believe. So this little set of nine comes in this small little package. The little metal box was packed in, I think, a page of French dictionary. And it has the shop sticker on it. Hey Google, how do you say a large aviary? A large aviary. Nice! Inside there was a watercolor paper swatch page, a nice printed cloth to protect the paints and transport, and my set got nine paints. We got fox, rose, bog, Barbie, not very Slavic, is it? Daybreak, Lavender, Night, Twig, Hair, and I got a tenth button of paint separately. It's black and it has the manufacturer's markers on it. Tencha means rainbow in Polish. And I'm gonna be using the attached watercolor pad to do my own swatches of these paints. Right away I saw that these paints activate really fast, really easily with water, uh, even though they're old. I never had any old sets of watercolors, so I don't know if that's the standard of old paints, but yeah, I was very surprised with how smooth they lay on paper. They're not powdery at all. Um, I'm used to powdery paints because I used a very cheap set for a long time. <laughs> and this color, the Barbie color, it's not very Polish sounding, is it, right? So I'll vote to change it into pierogi with blackberries. If you've ever eaten uh, pierogi with blackberries and cream, that's exactly the color that cream comes into. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this range of colors. Uh, they're quite warm in hue and they work together quite nicely. I'm only a little sad I didn't get a yellow, because yellow is my favorite color and I would love to try it out. I know the seller has a yellow paint of this, uh, but it just didn't come in my set, because, well, when you can get nine colors, there's only so much you can choose, but I still wish I got a nice yellow. And lastly, the little black button, uh, it's also quite pigmented, it just looks like ink, pretty much. Uh, I don't use black in art a lot, but yeah, it's still nice to have. And on the zoom you can see, again, how flat and nicely and smooth the color lays on the paper when dry. I wanted to celebrate this little piece of Polish history with Painting something inspired by Polish history, so I found these colored photographs from 1930s of Polish cottage life, so I thought it would be perfect. And just because I can't do my art without yellow, I'm using this Indian yellow from Renaissance instead. And I decided to do a little thumbnail to decide on where colors should go, because I'm not that versed in watercolor painting. 
I'm used to mostly digital these days because it's just a little easier for me to just, you know, open Photoshop and get going. Setting up paints can be a little, you know, time consuming, but you know, it's worth it to go traditional sometimes. It's a definitely different feeling and different vibe. After the thumbnail, I laid down this bluish grayish color to decide where the shadows are gonna go. It's a good practice, especially when you're a little rusty and not as much trusting into your own color laying abilities. Painting with watercolors is a lot about just laying layers and layers of color, of shadow, saturation. It's been quite nice to have this change from digital and acrylic or gouache. Tea break is perfect time to let that first layer dry um, and go into some warmer colors. At this stage I still utilize the wet paint quite a lot. I'm letting the paint pull in some puddles of water maybe bleed a little bit into each other. It gives it that nice ethereal atmosphere to the painting. Laying down this rusty orange color was probably my favorite part. It just looks so nice and vibrant. I love little pops of color like that. Doing this sheep uh, fur texture, <laughs> wool texture I guess was quite hard, I'm not used to making textures like that. And overall, um, in the later stages of rendering, it's a balance of what things to exaggerate, more pull into the focus, what things to leave, you know, bleed it through and blend it and blurry. Overall this piece took me about an hour, it was definitely just a warm up to see how all of these colors work, um, it's not something I would paint for myself, but I thought it was a good uh, little theme to pay homage to, you know, where this paint comes from and where I come from. I think I like this little thumbnail the most, <laughs> honestly, that's what watercolor does best, honestly, little suggestions of shapes rather than detailed work. Okay, so that has been fun. Now on to something much more my style. I did this sketch in my sketchbook just with crayons, uh, probably was waiting for some class in my uni, and I thought, you know, this would work perfectly with these pinks and reds of this little palette. So it's just this little P 
pair of hands holding each other with some stars. Um, honestly, that's what's most consistent in my art. Some intimacy and some stars. And I love me some hands, some bulky, bulky fingers. <laughs> Because this paint is so well pigmented, it's not um, dusty or cindy at all, um, it works perfectly for letting it pull in water for these little blushy effects on the knuckles that I just love, love doing. And again, I'm using the same yellow uh, from Renaissance to supplement my palette because I just love yellow and this is such a beautiful sunflower rich yellow. Oh, I love it so much. And I'm using some more wet on wet technique again for these lovely gradients. Some details. stars a little bit of lining and it's done <laughs> I'm very glad I got to get this little palette because not only are the paints so well made it's such a pleasure to use them but also I think it's good to keep some historical keepsakes for memories and souvenirs and you know to remember that people are always making art in any time and any place so yeah I really love this experience thank you for watching my review and my painting this is my first bigger project like this so i hope you enjoyed and let me know what you think about the paint and about the paintings in the comments and see you next time take care bye